Well, the right topology, we often like to uh, construct new spaces by uh, gluing together bits of old spaces or equivalently uh, imposing a, an equivalence relation and then taking the quotient space. So this example is just supposed to illustrate some of the kind of uh, formal ingredients in, in that kind of construction. So uh, <clears throat> here we've uh, we've got this space X. Uh, X is the sort of points X, Y, Z in R3 with the property that X squared plus Y squared is less than or equal to 1 and Z is equal to plus or minus 1. So uh, the condition X squared plus Y squared less than or equal to 1, that means we're at a distance less than or equal to 1 from the Z axis. And the condition z equals plus or minus 1, we're either at height 1 or at height minus 1. So uh, uh, the space that we've got is like this. Um, uh, here are the points that are at height 1, and here are the points that are at height minus 1. <coughs> and uh, you know, in both cases, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're required to be at a distance less than or equal to 1 from the z-axis. So uh, we've got a kind of disk here at uh, um, a distance less than or equal to 1 from the point zero, zero, 001, and here we've got a disk, a disk of points at uh, distance less than or equal to 1 from zero, 00 minus 1, which would be the center of this lower disk. <coughs> and then the idea is that we can uh, we can construct a space by, uh, by um, doing some gluing. We uh, glue the boundary circle of the top disk to the boundary circle of the bottom disk, and we can kind of draw a picture of what happens there when we... Uh, glue these two circles together, then the resulting space is kind of visibly uh, homeomorphic to uh, the uh, sphere S2. Um, so how can we kind of draw some, write some formulae for that? I mean, uh, you know, we can define a map f, f from the space X to the, the sphere S2 like this. We take uh, f of x, y, z, um, you take x comma y and then z times the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Um, and so why does this work? I mean s2 is the set of points where x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Um, so here <coughs> we take this point here and you take your x squared and your y squared and then you square this, this entry here. I mean uh, you square this entry well z is plus or minus 1 so when you square it it just becomes 1 you can ignore that but then you square the square root, you get 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and you add that on to the x squared and the y squared, you get 1. So this is, is indeed a point uh, in S2. Now, if we didn't, if we left out the z, then you would have the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And of course, uh, standard definition of the square root means the non-negative square root. So this would always be uh, uh, the non-negative square root. It would be in the upper hemisphere. But then we multiply by z, uh, and z could be plus 1 or minus 1. If z is plus 1, we get a point in the upper hemisphere. z is minus 1, we get a point in the lower hemisphere. Uh, if z is 0, then uh, we get a point in the equator. Um, <coughs> yeah, so, uh, so basically everything, uh, you know, the, if, you, if you ignore the, the boundary circles, then uh, everything in the top disk goes into the upper hemisphere, everything in the bottom disk goes into the lower hemisphere, and there's no overlap. But we do get some overlap, uh, you know, on the on the equator. These uh, uh, for the points in the boundary here, where uh, x squared plus y squared equals one, uh, then uh, that means that the square root of one minus x squared minus y squared equals zero. So uh, so it doesn't matter whether you've got a z equals plus one or a z equals minus one because we're multiplying it by zero. Um, yeah. So based on that, you know, we we need to impose an equivalent. Yeah, to, to formalize this concept of gluing, we need to impose an equivalence relation. And the uh, appropriate definition is that we, we consider two points in X to be equivalent. Well, we, they're equivalent if they're actually equal. But, uh, but then also yeah, we say that the two points are equivalent if uh, one's on the, uh, uh, on the boundary of the upper disk and the other one is on the boundary of the lower disk, kind of in the opposite position. Um, and then the, uh, so that defines an equivalence relation. And we find that uh, you know, two points go to the, uh, a map to the same place by f if and only if they're equivalent under this equivalence relation e. Um, so that means that, uh, that, the, that the kind of in, you get an induced map f bar from x mod e to s2. And uh, the thing we just said, you know, two points are equivalent if they get mapped, if and only if they get mapped to the same place. That implies that this f bar is injective. 
and then as a separate easy argument we see that f bar is also surjective so it's a it's a bijection of topological spaces now um, <clears throat> uh, you know, so you know, so that's a bijection but we really want it to be a homeomorphism um, so it's kind of uh, basically it, it's uh, it's kind of a consequence of the the definition of the quotient topology that, uh, that this map is kind of more or less automatically going to be continuous this f bar but uh, but that's not enough we want a homeomorphism which means that f bar has to be continuous and the inverse of map f bar f bar inverse in the opposite direction from s2 to x mod e that also has to be continuous um, that's also kind of more or less automatic in this case because uh, it's easy to see that this quotient space x mod e is compact because uh, x is compact and any quotient of a compact space is compact and then s2 that's a metric space so in particular it's Hausdorff and there's this general useful fact that if you've got a continuous bijection from a compact space to a Hausdorff space then the inverse is also uh, also continuous and so you've got a homeomorphism.